Should the Baltimore Ravens have traded for former Buffalo Bills, now Houston Texans wide receiver, Stephon Diggs? We talk about that and so much more coming up next year on this episode of Locked on Ravens. You are Locked on Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of Locked On Ravens. We are your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast, and I'm your host, Kevin Ostriker, Ravens Wire here with you, as always, on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for being here and making Locked On Ravens your first listen each and every day, wherever you're available on all podcasting platforms. That includes video form on YouTube, where you can like and subscribe. Also, in audio form, anywhere you get your shows, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the whole nine yards. We do five days per week, plus more of daily Ravens content, so news analysis, updates, and a whole lot more there as well. Today's episode of Locked On Ravens is brought to you by Game Time. Down the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. We have back in the building our Taco Thursday guest. It is for Baltimore Ravens wide receiver and a Super Bowl champion, Kadri Ismail Q. It's still not a ton of action on the Ravens side of things when it comes to actual additions and signing guys. There have been consistent losses. But now there's just there's a trade that is not related to the Ravens that is now freaking the fan base out. Stephon Diggs, a massive blockbuster going from the Buffalo Bills to the Houston Texans. And everybody in Baltimore seems to be talking about it. Everybody's talking about it because he's kind of a homegrown guy. Obviously, we saw what happened when the free agency or actually the draft, I believe, there was talk that John Harbaugh and them were kind of intrigued by him and Obviously, you know, Torrey Smith uh, coming from the Terps and uh, all the vouching for, you know, this this young guy. But when it came down to it, he had to go to Minnesota. When he went to Minnesota, he blossomed big time. When he went from Minnesota to, like, set it off with the, I guess, the the, the walk-off touchdown catch in the, yeah. in the playoffs to beat the uh, the Saints, it was, it was dramatic. It was awesome. It was amazing. Uh, with that said, he established himself. We both have seen him up close and personal <clears throat> when it came to the Ravens and the Bills and their many, many matchups. I know this. For the Bills to get rid of him, there had to have been that uh, frustration from both sides because you don't just go ahead and do away with your bona fide, clear and away, number one threat. Now, I get it that the Bills, they have been this entire time, like shedding money as far as the salary cap is concerned, got rid of some other guys on the defensive side of the ball as well, some really good players for them. But this one, yes, it is surprising that they would trade him to the Houston Texans and yes, I understand our crazy fickle fan base, why they'd be like, oh my God, we should have had him. I get it. The wide receiver position, it, it has been one, especially in the Lamar Jackson era, where people have wanted the team to trade for that star number one proven veteran receiver. And we'll talk about that a little more in the second part of the show, just about how things have been handled in, in Lamar's era, especially the rookie quarterback, Lamar Jackson era, or that contract. But The official terms of the deal, I'll just read them out here so, you know, we just have them on the record. The Texans get Stephon Diggs, a 2024 sixth-round pick, and a 2025 fifth-round pick. The Bills, in return, got a 2025 second-round pick. Now, Q, I am young enough to remember when, or I guess old enough now, to remember when Eric Acosta got a first-round pick from Marquise Brown. So, seems like we haven't seen a trade like that in a while. So, first of all, the Ravens won that trade by a mile. Shout out to Eric Acosta for that one. But the Bills are going to be taking on an incredible amount of dead money right now with Stephon Diggs. It's 30 plus million in dead cap money for them trading Diggs. So you're right. You don't take on that amount of dead money, let alone trade away the top guy, like you said, if there wasn't something else going on here. There was some drama between Stephon Diggs on Twitter, which, look, you gotta, we've heard that many, many, many times before. 
but it was a couple nights ago and people were talking about, oh, is Stefan Diggs essential to, to Josh Allen and his success? And then all these fans were like, no, he's not. And then Stefan Diggs was like, oh, really? And the next day, he, he, he's out of there. He, they say, they say you're, you're get out of here. So the Texans have, I think it's $19 million for Stefan Diggs. The contract for Diggs itself, he still has three years after this year. But the Ravens just, they can move money around. They can make some stuff work. It's not like they are completely hindered because of the way they're now going to have to maneuver around things with Lamar's big deal and all these other deals that are getting signed. But we have seen over the Lamar Jackson era, especially when Greg Roman was there, that they just feel like their priority is instead of trading for the guy, they're going to draft the guys and see if it works. So look, I, I would have loved to find Diggs in Baltimore, of course, if it comes without the drama. He's still a really good player. But I just don't think this trade was realistic for the player and just everything going on, money, drama, and, and everything that was entailed with it. If we're talking about, you know, looking at the future and that future, obviously we're talking now with Lamar Jackson, you got to win now. You got to put yourself in a position to win. I think they've done that clearly from a drafting aspect of things. I think at the same time, you got Derrick Henry. That is as huge as it gets when it comes to a, a free agent, a guy who's motivated himself to to really be in that position where it's like, yo, man, I, I feel really good. Um, the defense needs to be retooled. Clearly, we're still looking at some rush ends and whether or not, you know, it's, it's, it's David Ajabo stepping up. Uh, that remains to be seen. We got some young players at the linebacker position, but that offensive line, that's like priority number one. And I think that's where you can get a little ahead of yourself if you're, you know, the Baltimore Ravens and you're looking at a second round pick that's not quite the level of a Roquan Smith. Stephon Diggs, yes, he's a dynamic player, change or a game changer, um, but. I think you got enough playmakers in the Zay Flowers, Bateman world. Uh, you got good quality uh, backups that I don't think it's a situation where, yes, yeah, Stephon Diggs was needed a la a Roquan Smith, who obviously the Ravens traded for and signed to a beautiful contract and gave up that second round pick. Ravens, they covet their draft picks. I think this was a good, wise decision. You know, I was I was just about to ask you about the draft capital perspective of this because I think a lot of people were surprised when that second round pick came through on the compensation for Roquan Smith, and everyone's like, "Oh my, Eric DeCasso is trading a second round pick! Like, is is this real?" Because and it's true because the Ravens love the draft; they value their draft picks. It's very hard for them to give up a draft pick unless they are a hundred percent sure that the move is going to work. And look, in that Roquan Smith move they were and it, it's paid off brilliantly for them it was an incredible move but in this situation especially when draft picks are so valuable now to how the Ravens need to build their team up with the Lamar deal and everything now I've been very vocal about yes you know what I would love to see the Ravens go out there and trade for a proven veteran wide receiver someone who can come in there and if we're calling Zay the one, that guy can be the two. If we're calling Zay the two, that guy can be the one. Whatever your viewpoint on that is. But a la maybe a T. Higgins or a Cortland Sutton or a Brandon Ayuk or one of those guys. Mm -hmm. Depending on if you like or don't like those guys. Again, Stefan Diggs would have been really fun in Baltimore. Obviously, you mentioned the local connection earlier, Q, with, with Maryland and everything. But just felt like the timing wasn't completely right. But that doesn't mean that the Ravens, you know, their wide receiver room is finished. I expect them to draft a guy in, in a couple weeks here. They brought in some guys for visits as well. But, you know, you see that second round pit come across as the compensation for Diggs Q. And I'm just like, yeah, you know what? I, I can understand with the cap hit and just the level of drama and that pick. It, it just didn't make sense. I think for... The young staff of the Texans, you got a young quarterback. In a weird kind of a way, I think this does fit. You know, the, the Texans, they have young receivers. They have the young tight end. You've got a rookie on a rookie deal. You've got a, a head coach 
that I think is no nonsense slash relates to guys. And, and, and I think all of that works in, in their favor. Uh, clearly, they've had Mercurial receivers in Hopkins, obviously, in the way he was before. So we get it. You know, they, 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 they have a, a heartbeat on that. So I don't really think it's that big of a deal um, for the Texans. And I think it's something where, you know, C.J. Stroud, we, we saw his maturity and just how he loved to, to, you know, really get into the weeds of trying to be a better player. And, and I know it, it clearly it, it paid off big time. Um, you, you, you got another go-to threat. You got another go-to threat. Good for them. But I think where the Ravens are right now, Man, give me some kind of stud potential Marshall Yonda having. Give me some dude that, you know, has the potential to to have somewhat of a, you know, start to a career a la a, a Jonathan Ogden or Edwin Mulatalo. You know, do something along those lines that will say when we get into the playoffs, King Henry – and Lamar, both are feeling good, both are feeling competent, and the receivers are feasting on the outside. They're feasting because you, defense, you're picking your poison. You're saying, y'all not going to run down our throats. We're going to put the pressure on y'all receiving core, and Isaiah is crushing them. Mark Andrews is just balling. You got Bateman, even though everybody's busting on him, good. Put all those logs on the fire for him. I'm, I'm, I'm with it, all of it. I think this is a scenario where, yeah, one team needed it, Houston. Another team had to get rid of it, the Bills. Uh, but another team sits back and be like, hmm, I see the landscape. No big deal. Yeah, we know how big of a priority the offensive line has to be for the Ravens moving forward here, considering they lost those three starters. But I, I'll tell you, the Texans are about to be a massive problem. They are – that, that receiving group, you essentially have three number ones. It's Diggs, it's Nico Collins, and it's Tank Dell. All three of those guys, that is a dangerous wide receiving group. Plus, they added Daniel Hunter on that defense. Man, they're, they're, they're going to be good. And I'll give you my prediction for the Bills in the second part of the show. So we'll get to that coming up. We're talking a bit more about the Ravens of the past a little and talking about Lamar and his rookie deal and how the Ravens handled that, particularly at wide receiver, because it has the fan base buzzing right now. Stay tuned. A lot to get to on Left Our Ravens. First, this show is brought to you by Robin Hood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robin Hood is the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost in every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robin Hood Gold. But get this now through April 30th. Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. The subscription fees apply now for some legal info. Claim is of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss limitations applied to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robin to go for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robin and IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robin and IRA available to U.S. customers with standing. Robin and Financial LLC member SIPC is registered broker dealer. We're back for our second segment of Locked on Ravens. Kevin Ostriker still here with you on this Thursday. I'm here with Kadri Ismael, of course. Now, Q, I've been reserving the the second or the first part of the second segment to give a little health update. I've been doing it for the last week. My fever is 99. We're moving even more in the right direction. So we're getting better. 102.1 a couple of days ago was not a fun thing. And uh, hopefully on the, on, on the downswing and the mend from that. But in terms of the bills, I do want to give this quickly. I think this is going to be a really down year for Buffalo. They can recover. I'm not, they still have talent. And whenever you have Josh Allen, of course, that, that's a big part of your success. But I think with all that dead money, I think they're dealing with a total of like 45 ish million in dead money right now. You're going to get that second round pick in 2025. T Higgins is going to be available. 
after the franchise tag, I think they get T Higgins next year. And I think they retool a little bit. So I don't know how that would look, but how do you feel about something like that? Q kind of like a retooling year, get that dead money off your books. And then just, you have the quarterback in Josh Allen, you just go all in again and start it over. Yeah. But I, I even think this, that, you know, from a Josh Allen standpoint, I mean, he ran the ball an awful lot. Um, a lot of people, you know, talk and say what they will about, uh, this offense and, and running the ball and our, you know, beautiful dual quarterback that we have over here. But I think up there in Buffalo and uh, Western New York, their mindset is one of Josh Allen is trying to do it all and he's running too much. Well, they ran the ball OK against the Chiefs to the tune of 100 plus and dominated. And it was a few missed plays on their part where it was some made plays by Patrick Mahomes and their beautiful kicker did what they needed to do. I look at it this way. I honestly think as much as you would numbers wise, and this is where, you know, again, I, I, I struggle in the off season because it's always numbers and it's this potential. See, this is the thing. Like, it's not about the numbers. It's like, yo, man, who's the next guy up? And usually dudes are seizing the opportunity and recognizing that this is my time to shine. Shoot, if I'm a receiver on that roster, I'm like, man, Josh Allen, I know he's going to be expecting. Man, I'm, I'm ready to shine. Do you honestly think that just because the Jets got two of our offensive linemen, that Voorhees and Falele and company aren't sitting there like, yo, I know Eric is going to be bringing in other guys to compete, but I'm on the roster already. I already know the plays. I already got in because of the rotation. So I, I really feel good about where I'm going to be and how I think I can help this team win. This is the, the beauty of, of the art of how to build rosters. And, 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 and yeah, salary cap comes into play. Free agency comes into play. Disgruntled receivers <laughs> and offensive linemen and D linemen and retirements and all that. It all comes into play. What did Eric DeCosta say? It was interesting right after the AFC Championship game. Mark Viviano and I are down on the field. Taylor Swift is kissing it up with, uh, you know, uh, uh, Travis Kelsey. Man, I'm sitting there like, goodness, this organization is feeling sick right now. Yeah, the fly is like, hey, you know what? I, I, I can't sit back away. I got to evaluate. I got to fly down to Mobile. I got to look at what's going on down there. Yeah, Mike McDonald ain't in the building. I, I got to figure out my staff. Receiver coach is gone. Another coordinator left. You know, all of it, it all just matters. And it's the teams that don't flinch. The teams I remember Bart Scott and I were talking about this years ago when I was up at ESPN and he was with the Jets. He's like, Q, one of the biggest things that you look at, it's the way in which backups are taught. If you got good coaching, if you got a good organization, those backups, they they just it's like a plug and play. It's the next man up mentality. We'll see whether or not the Ravens have it. I think history proves that they do. But at the same time, up in Western New York. All right, Josh Allen, game on. Pressure's on you. Yeah, and by I should clarify, by down year, I don't mean like they're going to go 2-15 and 15 or something. I, I still think they can be a playoff team. But look, I'm a big Khalil Shakir guy. That's essentially who their number one receiver is at this point. They <laughs> signed Curtis Samuel. They have, I think, Matt Collins in that room. So not what they had last year with both, not only Stephon Diggs, but Gabe Davis also goes to Jacksonville. So that was a big one right there for me personally. Gabe, man, big, big, big play. Gabe, like holy cow, you're, you're. Yeah. That was a big one. I, I just, I, I. That's how I look at it. But okay. yeah, what was that deal? Three years, thirty nine million, I think. So yeah, but Buffalo, Ooh. they they had to make some tough decisions, and uh, yeah, you know, the Ravens are dealing with a bunch of losses. Obviously, they kind of set themselves up well. I think Buffalo kind of also, you know, built that roster a little bit. And now we've had to retooled a little bit more than maybe they would have liked. But speaking of the rosters, again, something, and we've had this conversation too, Q, but it's it's now in full force again because of the Diggs trade. It's just how teams are supplying their rookie quarterbacks on rookie deals. And we saw it 
back when uh, you know the the Cardinals go go and get DeAndre Hopkins for Kyler oh, yeah. Murray, and the Eagles get AJ Brown for Jalen Hurts. Obviously, the Bills went and got Stephon Diggs for Josh Allen, and now we're seeing it even more. Where look, the Bears are you know all but going to draft Caleb Williams at number one. Well, they go out there and Keenan Allen has one heck of a contract. That that cap hit is massive, but they go out there and get him because well. They're not going to be paying their quarterback $50 million per season. In Houston, Stephon Diggs, almost $20 million, $19 million. The Texans have to take on there. CJ Stroud on his rookie deal. They bring in Diggs. They get to Neil Hunter. They're retooling that roster because they don't have to pay CJ Stroud. Same thing in Tennessee. They go and they get Legereus Sneed and sign him to an almost $20 million per year deal. Calvin Ridley goes there, almost $100 million total there. I mean, they're making those big moves. Now, with the Ravens, I do want to say this. During Lamar's rookie deal, the Ravens tried to get him weapons because they drafted a ton of them. You know, they draft Marquise Brown in 2019 in the first round. We can't forget Mark Andrews was a third round investment in the 2018 draft. That counts as a weapon. Obviously, two years later from 2019, it was Rashad Bateman in 2021. Zay Flowers in 2023. They've invested the draft capital and the weapons, but my stance on this has been that while I give them credit for trying, I do think that there should have been some effort to try to trade for, even if it wasn't the level of an AJ Brown, even if it wasn't to that exact level, trying to get a veteran number one in there, even if it was just for two or three years of those five years, just, just to get a proven guy in there, and, you know, Marquise was awesome for them yeah. at points. And I think he really developed over each of his three years in Baltimore. But they had to trade him away because the offensive system. And that's where a lot of people also kind of raise the question. It's, well, why would you ask the Ravens to trade for a wide receiver and give up that draft capital and that money if Greg Roman's offense never valued wide receivers in the first place? Yeah, see, and that that's the, the thing. I, I know behind closed doors, like, what is it that Greg Roman was – saying when it came to, yeah, we're going to draft a receiver, uh, the likes of Hollywood Brown, and and what does that progression look like for Lamar as far as, you know, how he feels or fits into the offense and some of the, the, the things that, you know, the way in which the three tight end system, it was a, I am featuring Lamar as a running back, then we're going to go off of there and, you know, throw the ball around the field. Whereas I think for Lamar, it was like, yeah, I mean, I could do that. Clearly he could. He was MVP. But it's how do I shift and grow and move? And you and I have talked about it during the regular season, you know, so many times. I think Lamar is in a good position. I know uh, guys like Steve Young talked about it on other podcasts as well, where he's like, look, you know, or even Kurt Warner for that matter. They're both great quarterbacks, Hall of Famers. They're like the off-schedule play, second to none. You, you know, he 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 is who he is. Um, that's what makes him, Patrick Mahomes, and like a guy like a Josh Allen, so unique. They have off-schedule plays. But those on-schedule timing and rhythm plays, I think it's the Todd Munkin era that pushes Lamar into that next phase of, of quarterback greatness. Uh, and then I, I look at, yes, those weapons. We got to also remember Hollywood Brown, he didn't want to be here. So it wasn't that uh, it was some sort of, you know, well, they're not going to draft or they did draft or whatever. It's just, all right, we're going to accommodate you. We'll send you off to Arizona. I think it's, 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 it's just so interesting to me, the dynamics of things and the way it looks, because now he's over in KC and, you know, Honestly, that kind of scares me. Not not scare me in the sense of like, oh my god, but he fits really, really well, <laughs> you know, for what the Kansas City Chiefs like to do. Um, my God, man! And and now you got the whole what Rishi Rice thing going on with the uh, car accident. It, it, I love it. I mean, the off season, it just so many. You know, these are the days of our lives, like. You know, we only got one life to live and, and hopefully nobody gets hurt and go to a general hospital because, yeah, all my children are sitting out there, moms, dads, 
They're hoping that uh, they have some sons that will do the right thing and, and not get in trouble. Man, I, I haven't heard those General Hospital references since Lamar's contract saga over a year ago. We, uh, we're, we're back with, with the General Hospital. I, I, I miss those. It was every single episode you would rip out like five of those. So glad, glad to have those back. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm with you where, again, it was – it's I'm always going to be in there are other Ravens fans. They're always going to be in the boat of, you know, the Ravens mishandled Lamar's rookie contract. But to me, as much as I would have loved for them to go out there and get a guy, I mean, it was something I was pounding the table for, for years on this show. It was just really unfortunate how, I mean, we, and you mentioned it with Marquise there, Q it was, well, why would a proven receiver want to come to Baltimore and get four targets a game? get three targets a game. And you can even talk about it with Stephon Diggs, where even like present day, there are still issues with him and complaining after not getting enough targets or enough catches. And we saw even in this offense last year, you know, consistently Bateman, two targets, then three targets, then two, then four Beckham, same thing. It was an offense that was dominated by Zay and by Mark Andrews. And I'm not saying that Stephon Diggs comes in there and, you know, gets ignored, but it's a matter of the offense as well, but yeah. then it's the balance of like, okay, well then why isn't the offense fully supplementing what Lamar Jackson can be? And that was a whole nother conversation because then we were starting to have the conversation of, well, Greg Roman in certain aspects, it's not maximizing what Lamar can do as a whole player. So it's just, it's that whole thing was just a mess. I would have loved the Ravens to go get a guy like DeAndre Hopkins. I know they tried to back in 2020, but Texans didn't want to trade him to the AFC. So, of course, he goes to Arizona. But coming up in the final part of the show, we're going to be talking about what's the plan for the current Ravens. I know free agency hasn't exactly gone as maybe some people would like in terms of additions. So we're going to be talking about where the Ravens can go next. Stay tuned. We'll have to get to Unlocked on Ravens. First, this show is sponsored by Game Time. There have been plenty of frustrating ticket buying experiences in my life. Even when it comes to getting Orioles tickets for baseball, I wasn't sure if the seats were good. Sometimes I couldn't find last minute tickets. Sometimes there were no good deals at all. Now, speaking of baseball game times, all the unauthorized ticket marketplace of major league baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier prices on the game time. app. as you go down, the closer it gets to first pitch with good last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat and the lowest price guarantee game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Obviously, the Orioles, it was, they walked it off again yesterday against the Royals. They won that series. It's a really awesome opening day. It was obviously really fun. They crushed the Angels there as well. And for the Orioles, they're going on the road, but they're going to have a lot of home games this year. I'm excited to go to a couple of them and using the game time app. I'm going to be sure to get some good deals on there. They have last-minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, all-in pricing, seat views, lowest price guarantee. They have it all over on game time. The views from the seat in the venue is my particular favorite because you can see – where you are sitting, and you can get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. Take the guess we're gonna out of buying tickets with game time down the game time app, create an account, use code locked on NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account, redeem code locked on NFL, spell L O C K E D O N NFL for twenty dollars off. Download the game time app today. Let's make tickets lowest price guarantee. And the show is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps you ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has it covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for, and with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. All the parts you need or the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Also, items only, schools and supply, eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. We're back. Our final segment of Locked on Ravens. Kevin Ostriker and Kadri Ismail still talking Ravens football with you on this Thursday. Now, Q, Derrick Henry's been the big signing. There really hasn't been another one. They brought in Josh Jones, offensive lineman. They they brought back Chris Board. I'm sure that was a big signing for, uh, for John Harbaugh. He was super pumped about that one. But really not a lot else. In fact, there have been a lot of losses. That's kind of been the storyline for the Ravens. Now, the most recent one was Jadavian Clowney, who goes to the Carolina Panthers, a two-year, $20 million deal. Now, we didn't have a chance to talk about it yet, so I want to ask you, because $10 million per year, 
we were kind of talking about the Ravens and their cap situation. There was no way they could have been in on him for, for that much money. In fact, the deal actually goes up to 24, so 12 million per season. But that doesn't necessarily take away the fact that considering the way Clowney played both as a pass rusher and a run defender last year, it's still a pretty significant loss. Yeah, I, I tell you what, his leadership on that that D line, uh, the way in which you know his his energy as one of the the studs, if you will, coming in. I think you have a, a front line guy, a, a mid level guy, obviously Roquan, and that back end guy. We saw the the maturing. Obviously, we know Marlon Humphreys is a leader, but we saw the maturing of uh, Hamilton on the outside. Kyle just you know, blossom all pro. But I think when it comes to, you know, getting your bag, you got to get your bag. So I'm not hating on him, but I'm like, huh? <laughs> come on. He had a great career, but then I think it just magnified when he got here last year. And so I think that really put him in a great position as far as leverage for Carolina. Um, so you know, hats off to Jadavian Clowney. Like, he he balled out last year, and now he's reaping the fruits of it. Uh, it's unfortunate, but, man, yeah. he, he I, I liked what I saw when he was on the field. Him, Roquan, Kyle Hamilton, all those guys. Like, it just – every level. I think he made Matt BK better. I think he and Kyle Van Noy, they just – you know, they, 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 they played well off of one another. And that defense, man, holy wow. Ugh. Oh. It's something that we were all expecting. We were all expecting these losses. Yeah. Now, in terms of which players, we did, we weren't really sure heading into free agency. But, boy, has it been a lot. It has been a lot of guys. And for Clowney, he also mentioned the fact that he's going to be able to go home, essentially, and, and go to the Carolinas. Obviously, it's a big deal for him to be able to be closer to family. He said it was kind of tough. You know, he said he loved Baltimore, loved his time. But – it was tough being away from family, which look, I get it, it's, it's hard. So that was a big fact. And Clowney also was never, I, I think he was never signed a deal in his career before training camp. And when, <laughs> when, when you're, when you're offered 10 million per season, you say, you know what, I'm gonna make an exception this time for you. <laughs> and after you get offered that money. So I, I don't blame him. And again, congratulations to him for, for, for getting that, but it does. I hope and pray that, you know, that coaching staff, they take care of their vets. I think that was one of the things that if you look at truly what John Harbaugh and them did as far as getting rid of the F minus in the building, I think that they really helped themselves uh, with, with just, yeah, recognizing some of the metrics for some of the veteran players. You don't necessarily need to run them in the ground. Heck, Odell Beckham Jr., you know, he came off that knee. You could see how they allowed him to kind of go through training camp the whole nine yards kind of had a little bit of a setback, but, you know, they gave him an opportunity to, to heal up. Same thing with Jadavion, you know, came in late, but, okay, we're going to let you do what you do. Those vet days are so critical. I'd be curious to see how Carolina, clearly when you're struggling as a team, you want all hands on deck. Meh, we'll see. Going to be very interesting. And you know what? Kyle Van Noy is still out there. He is kind of the – uh the prize of the remaining free agent pool. So yeah. hopefully, you know, I think everybody was expecting one or the other to be back anyway, but since they don't have one under contract yet, one of them going off the board obviously caused a lot more panic than if they know was already back under contract. So that's something to monitor. Another thing to monitor is of Ravens running back JK Dobbins, who is a free agent right now. He ended up, he's had visits with the chargers and, he had one with the Chiefs a couple days ago, but then a couple hours after that visit, the Chiefs just re-signed Clyde Edwards-Alaire, and they, the reports were, okay, well, maybe it can work out just later down the line in the offseason. Now, the Cowboys don't have a running back at all, so I still think that's the fit there. But the, the Dobbins situation is interesting. Again, we talked about it last week, and we, we don't have to necessarily revisit that part of it, Q, but he's expected to have a home very soon. And it feels like it's between one of those three teams. And I mean, how crazy would it be if he went to Los Angeles, reunited with Gus Edwards, and even crazier, reunited with Greg Roman? I tell you what, like this league is about who do you know and, and them knowing you and the comfort. You normally would see like from a free agent standpoint, 
you know, guys will wind up signing with division rivals just because the division rivals saw you twice a year and the coaches kind of like have a familiarity with you. For J.K., it was interesting because Chase Daniels, he made a great point when he started talking about how his time, uh, I think it was with the Jets, he gets off the plane. He was with Philly, gets off the plane from Dallas to New York, and they're like, yeah, we already signed a backup, so we're good. And Chase was like, oh, okay. Now, it was interesting because he's like, you know, I just told the driver of the car, drive me down to Philly. And I guess he and his wife started, you know, making plans to to go back home down to Dallas and move all their stuff from, from the Eagles. It cracked me up because that's how this game works. It's it's an off-season game. It's a, it's a twist. It's a turn. It's a, you know, some coaches are, are cool. Some coaches aren't. Some general managers are, are jerks. Some general managers aren't. Um, yeah, like there's just so many, you know, winding turns and plot lines that go on when it comes to, in this particular case, J.K. Dobbins. Clyde Edwards Hilaire, his, his agent probably like, yo, 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 we're playing musical chairs. Let's not be that guy. The music stops. We don't have a chair. At the same time, if the Chiefs are like, oh, well, you want to play with us now? Great, cool. But they know too. Yeah, well, he already knows our system. He already knows everything. And we know he's healthy. You know, if you look at J.K., he's had a really tumultuous type of a time when it comes to uh, his career. So I think at the same time, go where you want it. And if, yeah, Greg Roman and him call, I'd be like, absolutely, because it's a system that he's going to be familiar with. But then again, you got to also address the elephant in the room, which was that Cincinnati game where he wasn't he wasn't the bell cow. And then at the most critical of junction, they didn't give him the rock. And I can see where, you know, maybe he and Greg sit down and air it out. Who knows? But I think, uh, yeah, that that could be a good fit. Justin Herbert's probably kicking himself like mother of pro. If y'all give me one more tight end, one more fullback, what the heck? Give me some receivers because I lost some really, really good ones. Yeah, no shortage of former Ravens over there right now. Edwards and Ben Mason was the recent one. Bradley Bozeman, Hayden Hurst. You know, Q, you're talking about who you know. I think Greg Roman knows a running back by the name of Devonta Freeman. I think Freeman played under him for a year. Are, are, are we going to see Devonta Freeman go into Los Angeles? And, and, and are we going to have to rebrand this whole show here to uh, to little Chargers? <laughs> If we do that, O to the M to the G, I will crack up and, I don't know, eat my hat. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll hold you to it. I'll hold you to it. I, I think Freeman's long long done with his playing days. But I think there's a shot JK goes there, which I, I still think is, is pretty crazy. But, Hugh, I appreciate you. Thanks so much for hopping on. As always, tell people where they can find you, what's going on, and what you're working on. Yep, yep. Kadri and Smile, Missile Training. You can see the logo, all the things in the background. This is my facility. Come on up, check me out at missletraining.com. Doesn't matter the age, doesn't matter the person, doesn't matter the skill level. I develop people, I develop them really well. It's a great system, helps you understand what a true assessment of what you look like as far as if you're a locomotive person trying to go forward and increase your speed increase your health and your durability. That's what I do. At the same time, you can also find me on WJZ with Mark Viviano with a variety of our purple shows from purple playbook to purple passion, purple pregame, purple postgame, all those things. Check us out. You'll love it. And of course, bam, I'm right here on Locked On Ravens with my guy. Oh, strike. What up? That's right. We're doing it every week. Q comes on on Thursdays, so be sure to check out these episodes if you're a big fan of Q, and you should be a big fan of Q. He'll be right here every single week, and the links to the rest of his work will be in the description down below. Q, I appreciate you again. Thanks for hopping on, and thank you for listening to Locked on Ravens today. One more time, be sure to subscribe in video form and audio form. It's the same show, both audio and video, so you're not missing out. Thank you to all the everydayers who listen to the show every single day. If it's your first time in, Welcome in. Hopefully you enjoyed the content, or if you're somewhere in the middle, thank you for tuning into the show as well. Coming up tomorrow, we'll be rounding out the week with more Ravens content. Stay tuned. I'll see you right back here tomorrow on Locked on Ravens.